In this video, we're going to introduce you to a new telescope from Optus. Now, Optus is part of the Mead Bresser uh, stable of com uh, companies and uh, shows good pedigree, I think, with this instrument. Um, one of the first things I want you to notice is the general size of the instrument. It's a good size. Uh, it can be used by adults and children alike. Comes supplied with this full-sized a, a field tripod. And at the moment, I've got the legs on full extension. You could easily put this down a little bit lower uh, if it was to used by a child. An ideal partnership viewing situation with this would possibly be with the adult CT child standing so it being a refractor makes that actually work really rather well in terms of the position of the eyepiece. Let's get on with the detail of the uh, telescope a little bit more. It's a 60 millimeter refractor with a 700 mil focal length so this is a great little telescope for exploring the night sky looking at the bright planets uh, the moon that kind of target um, it'll also show you some of the brighter targets in the deep sky as well comes supplied with its own little red dot finder this is an electronic device that appears to project a red dot on the sky in actual fact it works by reflection and you simply look through the finder and it appears to produce a dot on the sky uh, showing you where the, where the telescope is actually pointing very easy to use um, we find it an ideal recommendation we like to suggest that this is one of the first accessories you actually buy after you've got your telescope one of the great things about the Optus here actually comes with one of those included in the kit it's pretty well equipped as well with uh, other equipment we get three eyepieces included with the Optus we get a 25 mil wide field um, eyepiece we get a 10 mil uh, medium uh, field, medium power eyepiece and a high power 4 mil eyepiece. The 4 mil there is equipped with a nice little rubber eye cup as well. It also comes supplied with a 2 times Barlow and that's a great way of multiplying the focal length of the telescope so you get a lot more magnification out of each of those eyepieces. And it, it's got four really good magnifications. Um, it starts at 28 times with the 25 mil wide field, goes up to 56, then 70 times, and all the way up to 140. And that's really a lot of magnification. So you're gonna be able to see things like Jupiter's rings with this, the cloud belts of Jupiter, the more, the four main Galilean moons, a wealth of detail more than you could possibly um, describe or uh, draw on the moon. Uh, canyons and craters and rocks and boulders, you'll be really amazed at how much you can see with a telescope like this. Um, Want to bear in mind that a, a good many of the uh, deep sky targets discovered by Charles Messier were actually discovered with a smaller telescope than this. So this 60 millimeter is really actually quite a capable little, little instrument. Far and away, the most important thing about this telescope is down here, this little gadget, the handset. Looks like it's got a kind of mobile phone built into it. The great thing about the handset is this telescope is completely robotic and it actually knows where something like 42,000 targets can be found in the night sky once you've got it set up. It's very easy to use. You communicate with it, as you can see in English. We've got a two-line display here uh, that after you've done your initial setup, we've got two choices there, by the way. We can actually select um, brightest star or two star alignment. Once that's done and you've done the initial alignment, which takes somewhere in the order of two minutes, so it's pretty quick to uh, set up and get going, the telescope then can allow you to find targets in the night sky simply by picking them off of a list here. So after we've done the alignment, um, we can actually just press the button, say for planet, and simply select the planet we want to look at. Uh, so here we are coming down onto um, Uranus. Uh, come down a bit further, Saturn, Jupiter, there we go. If we actually want to look at that, we just press enter. At the moment, it was able to tell us there that at the moment Jupiter is below the horizon, so it's a great way of planning your observing session as well. You can actually get this going indoors. You can plug the battery unit into the bottom of the handset and operate the handset indoors without the telescope so that you can sit on your sofa and plan your observing session deciding when's the best time to actually go out and look which is an absolutely brilliant idea it's a bit like having brian cox out there in the garden with you you can ask it questions in english it will identify targets in the night sky for you um, simple use of the telescope the buttons here in the dark actually glow soft red now you may have heard earlier on there i mentioned the fact that uh, this has got uh, 42,000 targets on board. Now, that really is pretty extraordinary because I've been doing this uh, um, 
hobby uh, of astronomy since I was about 14. And to be honest with you, I've probably seen less than a thousand of those targets. So at 42,000 targets, uh, it's probably more than you're going to want to look at in any one lifetime, to be honest with you. Do bear in mind some of them are in the southern hemisphere rather than up here in the north, but certainly a good 20, 25,000 of them are actually in the northern hemisphere. Also bear in mind, you might not be able to see all of them with a 60 millimeter scope as well. So that's another thing just to bear in mind. Another good thing about the Optus is that the telescope comes complete with this storage and carry case. There's enough room in here to carry all your bits and pieces, the tripod, the main body and the telescope and all the accessories, plus a few things like a torch and your, your books and that kind of stuff, all in a hold holder that you can easily carry around. It even comes equipped with a shoulder strap there as well. That really is a useful feature and really shows, I think, part of the ethos of the uh, Optus that, it, that uh, portability comes as standard. Another nice feature found on the Optus that I think goes a long way to establish its uh, pedigree as a quality telescope is this single bolt attachment system for the telescope. Now obviously it makes it child's play putting the, tele the telescope on and off the mount. You could see just a couple of seconds work to get it on and off. Um, but what I really like about this is this is actually a solid aluminium mounting point. Now you don't normally get this on anything uh, costing less than about £250. This is, a, this is a really good sign of the quality intentions of this telescope. And I particularly like the fact that it uses a standard dovetail cradle uh, mounting point. So you could quite easily fit other telescopes onto this system at some time in the future. That's a really nice feature for what is essentially an entry level telescope that it's got that kind of future proofing built into it. That's a really nice feature, standard dovetail. I've just flipped the telescope round just to show you uh, what's going on at the rear here. Um, it's got a built-in on and off switch at the rear here. This is the plug where the handset goes. This is the power in point. Now it comes with this little hang-on battery box um, that you put your batteries in. In fact, oddly enough, this telescope actually comes supplied with eight batteries. Don't rely on those though. They, uh, they are probably fairly uh, basic batteries. So equip yourself with a decent set of eight alkaline 1.5 volt AA batteries to drive this telescope. Um, let's just hang that back on the uh, leg there. Um, the uh, other bits and pieces that are supplied with the telescope include these uh, dustproof bolt bottles for your eyepieces. That's a nice little touch rather than have them just laying around in the bag there. And another feature is the um, mirror star diagonal on the eyepiece holder here. This is so that you can look up into the sky obviously without getting a, uh, getting a crick neck uh, and make it very comfortable for observing. You can use the telescope terrestrially. Um, there's no real problem with that. A little bit overpowered to be honest, but you can get an image erection device that would go on the rear here, enable you to get an image that's the right way up and the right way left to right. Do bear in mind the telescope as it stands will show you a terrestrial image that is the right way up, but flipped left to right. But you could easily, uh, obviously you, one, you can live with that, or two, you could easily convert that using a uh, prism erection system. That about uh, rounds it up for the Optus 60. We'll see you again soon, I hope. Bye for now.